uh, Dr. Miranda, Jay, and thank you so much for this honor, and thank you to all of you at the Newman community of students and faculty. Uh, I accept this and am honored uh, for myself, for my family, and particularly for my wife, Eileen, who, as Dr. Miranda said, couldn't be here uh, as she cares for the kids today, and it's sometimes hard to split the duties. Uh, but we had a chance over the last couple of days, Eileen and I, to reflect on this. We've been married 19 years. We started dating back in high school, and I'm in my early 40s, so that seems like an awful long time ago. And we've been through an awful lot together, including getting married when I was in law school. So we started on that path in life and eventually practiced a couple of years of law and decided maybe there was something else I wanted to do. And my dad was a cop, so I didn't exactly have a big trust fund to pull from, but I had the Student Loan Servicing Corporation of America. So every time I got a bright idea of going back to school, I seemed to register another $50,000 on the debit side, but figured someday I'd pay it off. And I promise each of you will pay off those loans. One of the things Eileen and I thought about was going all the way back to 1997. What seemed to be a great time in our lives. We had finished what was then, and I promised her, and, and still held to this promise, the last of the schools I would attend when I got my MBA. We had our healthy two and a half year old son, John. And then we had my daughter, Megan, who was only six months old. And as we graduated, I carried each in an arm up to the stage, and I got my diploma from the dean. And they had a teddy bear, uh, with the university crest for each of the kids. And it seemed like a wonderful, magical time in our lives. And I had the fortune back then of, of being chosen by my classmates to deliver the student uh, address to the graduates. And boy, I spent weeks, days thinking about, what would you ever talk about? And I read some of the greatest commencement addresses ever given, which I promise you this, this is not. But I pulled a couple of words together back then, and Dr. Miranda referred to the book that Kita Anand wrote about our family a few years ago, and, and she uses it in a quote in framing some of our lives, and, and I will use this for a reason. Back then, 12 years ago, the last time I stood at a university podium, I said these words in speaking to my classmates. By virtue of our graduate degrees and our own talents and ambition, many of us will go on to do great things. Use that greatness to combat disease, to fight racism, to promote the entrepreneurial spirit in all of our countries, and use it especially in our position as global business leaders to ensure the prosperity and survival not just of capitalism around the world, but of democratic capitalism. For as John Kennedy once said, when one man is enslaved, all cannot truly be free. And it was a great day, and we thought the whole world was ahead of us and we had our plans. But sometimes plans change. Less than nine months after that, we realized that Megan wasn't doing the things that a young girl is supposed to do. Otherwise healthy, but she wasn't taking those first steps. And pretty shortly, in the spring of 1998, we got her diagnosis that she suffered from this rare and fatal disease. And the doctor told us there wasn't much that could be done. Patrick was seven days old at the time. And he looked at little Patrick and said there was a 25% chance that Patrick would have this disease also. And because it's recessive, there was no history of it in our family. Thankfully, we would come from very, very healthy families. And it was sort of a classic, this isn't supposed to happen to us. This wasn't in the plan. So what do you do? And uh, I'll leave it to you guys to read the book or maybe watch the movie when it comes out next year. But fast forward, our kids weren't supposed to be two years old and now they're 12 and 11. And only because so many people, literally hundreds and hundreds of scientists and business persons, philanthropists, other people came together to try to develop a cure and a treatment for a disease that only affects a couple of thousand people. And eventually we did come up with that treatment and thankfully it was in time to save our kids' lives. And although they're still weak and affected with a neuromuscular disease, they're alive and they're happy and they're healthy. And I think for us, it's taught us a lot of lessons.